There's a lot of can, cables, a lot of places. I can see from your wall you do a lot of LSD. Is that correct? Oh, you're you're damn. Do our fair share. I'm t- I'm telling you what, we uh, ex- hit our first show on LSD when we were about 18 years old, and it was so epic that we did the whole year on LSD, <laughs> and it was just over a hundred shows, and that was uh 15 years ago. So, we've learned a lot, and I, I you know you know all about psychedelics. Well, like it tells me, well, dude, that's a, that's you know, no one puts a wall together like that that uh, doesn't do LSD. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very true. So, so how are things going for you? I see that you've recently relocated. Uh, not recently, but we've been underground um, for seven months ever since we got out of jail in the Dominican Republic. Um, we we're on the run for seven months and having fun. Went to the Bahamas and. We were sunbathing on the beach, making videos, posting them on Twitter, and putting, you know, our thumbs to our noses. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they came after us there. We went to Cuba. Uh, the Cuban government called us in. And we'd only been there two months. Uh, called us in and said uh, the United States had unofficially requested uh, that uh, they return us to the states. Uh, Cuba just said no. <laughs> <laughs> but they did give us. But they did say you help. You have seventy-two hours to get out of our country and never come back. You are an embarrassment to us now. So we left, went to the Dominican Republic. The soldiers were on the dock waiting for us as we pulled in. We were instantly arrested, and the Dominican Republic said the same thing: you have to go back to America. Uh, except they were going to send us back. Cuba just said no. Uh, my lawyers managed to waylay that, and we ended up. Uh, going to London, where we went underground. We've been underground now for eight months. Is that right, Dave? Eight months. <coughs> well, I, I watch hey, your. I do watch you mind your... if I get? Do you mind if I get Janice in on this? Because uh, please do bring her in. Guys that don't, wouldn't give a shit. Come on. Yeah, Mrs. Mrs. McAfee. Let's go. Come on. Bring her Come in. On, babe. Where would you be without her? Come on. No, that'd be nowhere. I tell you now. <laughs> I got some questions. I got some questions Hello. for Mrs. McAfee. Hello, Hello. how are this you? Looks like Luke. <laughs> Here, I'll show you the other guys. Uh, we have a ton of Hi, cameras. Guys. We have a ton Hello. of cameras. So let me uh, just switch around the room real quick and see what we can do. There's Ralph. Ralph's the drummer. How's it going? Hello, Ralph. Hey, Ralph. You look like a drummer. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what do we got here? That's Buddha. He's the bass player. What's going on? Oh, you look like a Buddha. Yeah, right. actually, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> You know, a lot of bass players are, are kind of skinny. Um, I would have, <laughs> I would have, I would have uh, placed you with a trumpet, but whatever. I, <laughs> well, I played trumpet, and that's how we met. Actually, is uh, me and Jay really? met playing trumpet in middle school. Oh, oh nice! Awesome. Okay. We, we've been playing together <laughs> Listen, ever since. The, the trumpet, trumpet can be an awesome fucking instrument. I know. And if played by the right, uh, the right lips, um, Jesus, I mean, it can be as sweet as a saxophone. Absolutely. Yeah, we uh, actually did our album, our new album, and we have uh, sax, trumpets. The trumpet is what really brought it together. Mm-hmm. It was, it's just crazy. The guy who played trumpet on the album was incredible. Absolutely. And you're a piano player. Yeah, not much of one. I've, I've never taken lessons. I just bought a piano about 30 years ago uh, just for the hell of it. Hey. And just started, started banging on it. So I can't read music. I don't know shit about music. Same. We don't either. <laughs> yeah. We're all we're all self taught. <laughs> we we just grew up doing it together. Yeah. Nice. So I got questions. So anyway, so so in in the Dominican Republic, and we listen, we've been at sea for four and a half fucking days. How would you describe how yes. bad that was? Well that was that was rough because we had our dogs, our four, four dogs. Four large dogs and nine people yeah. on, on a boat. And everyone got sick except for four and a half John. fucking days yeah. in a storm. Yeah, it was bad. Oh my God! And then we pulled in. Yeah, and then we when we pulled into the Dominican Republic, um, they had already they were there waiting for us, and so they had soldiers strategically placed on each of the docks that they had emptied out, and they had moved all of the boats that were there at the harbor off to one side, so they're kind of all crowded so that, together. So that if the shooting started, yeah. uh, no one's going to get hurt except right. for us or the soldiers. So. <laughs> <laughs> now yeah. keep in mind, we do have a rep. Uh, yeah. International, just a right? little, so <laughs> just a little, um, and you know we have been known to—I don't know—the 
the next to the last house we had, the, I'd probably put a hundred bullet holes through walls and ceilings. Oh yeah, um, that so was in Tennessee. Yeah. That was in Tennessee. So, you know, we we do we're, we're trigger happy, no question. In any case, he's trigger happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> But in any case, yeah, so they were waiting for us. Um, and God damn it, if you're looking for a jail, listen, I've been in jails in Mexico, America, Guatemala, Belize, all over the fucking world. Uh, if you're looking for a jail experience, do not start the Dominican no. Republic. I mean, Janice has been in jails. Yes, I have many jails. Many times. <laughs> I do not recommend. And the, listen. Any, is, any jail outside of I mean, the U.S. You, you have jail got sucks. to be a jail fucking connoisseur. <laughs> to survive that jail, I'm you, no. Oh, um, man. So, no, I mean, for, you know, no, no fucking running water, no no glass in the windows. I mean, just rusted iron bars. Yep. <clears throat> Mosquitoes are thick. You could, you could eat them. Uh, no fans, no air conditioning, no, nothing. I mean, fuck me. Um, <laughs> That's terrible. It jail was an sucks. Ugly place. Concrete, concrete, concrete floors. Um, yeah. No. So what's it like being on on uh, on the run with Mr. McAfee, Janice? Um, an adventure for sure. <laughs> so you're having <laughs> you're sure. having you're at least having a good time. Um. Yeah. You know what? He gives good time. He he gives really good time. <laughs> so. Yeah. That that is one thing. You know, I I don't give much, but I do give good time. <laughs> well, you hang with me. I don't care who you are. Now listen, we may go through some rough periods, yeah. uh, but as long as they trust me, like I, I always keep telling, them, trust me, I'm going to get us out of this. I always do. Um, so yeah, it's it's been an adventure for me. Yeah, what for else, me, baby? For me also, um, it's been a, a stressful for sure. Um, just because not you know not being able to have I guess sort of the the things that you're accustomed to, you know, you know, in life, you know, uh, in and out burger. You know, let's say McDonald's. You know what I mean? Like little <laughs> things. Yes. You know, decent Starbucks weed. Starbucks even. Decent but weed me. regularly. Oh, yeah. yeah? Oh, that, I mean, that's these are things that you miss. But also my family, my kids, of course. Um, but but outside of that, you know, it's I don't know. It's it's tolerable. You know, you just you just it's life. You know, sometimes life throws you a shit sandwich. There, and it's you, inconvenient and you at times. We, we cannot have telephones, for example. Yeah. Uh, oh wow. We'll never be able to have a telephone. Uh, if we had a phone, we would be collected instantly. I mean, that's how they can't. That's so, how they locate you. So right? what? Right. What is it that they're exact? What What are they after you for now? What does the U.S. want with you? All right. So now, now I haven't paid taxes in ten years, and I'll never pay taxes again because they're unconstitutional and illegal. That's right. Plus, I've already paid fifty million dollars in taxes, and I have not received fifty million dollars in services. Um, I just stopped paying them. And every year I send a, a, a letter to the IRS saying I'm not filing a return, you know, where I live. Um, for eight years, it didn't bother me. I mean, listen, I've already paid more money than God. So, um, however, two years ago, I started speaking on stages around the world saying, listen, people, if you don't want to pay taxes, the way to avoid them is to use privacy coins and distributed exchanges. Um, and that, that sent a red flag because that risks the revenues of the U.S. and actually <laughs> all world governments, which is why most are cooperating with them and trying to collect this. In any case, um, so uh, they filed on January 22nd of last year, a, uh, they, they convened a grand jury. Now, grand juries are supposed to be secret. Uh, I don't know if you know much about them. Only the prosecutor gets to present evidence. The defense does not even know that it's happening. It's a secret. Why? Because people tend to run. <laughs> yeah. when, because grand juries convict 100% of the time. It's it's an archaic. There are only two countries in the world that have grand juries. One is America. The other is Libya. Everybody else has abandoned that uh, barbaric practice. But in any case, since I'm John McAfee, I found out about it a week in advance and we hopped on our yacht with our staff and sailed away. Um, and uh, the great escape. <laughs> well, yes, like me. the great I, escape know, on the freedom boat. Listen, I, I'm, you know, I'm 74. <laughs> I'm not going to spend the rest of my life in a fucking prison. Um, 
where no one will ever hear my voice again and I'll never get to uh, you know, see the light of day. No, it's not interesting to me. Um, so in any case, we, we, we left and uh, the, the government literally chased us from the Bahamas to Cuba to the Dominican Republic. We just barely squeaked out uh, using trickery of mine, which I use constantly. Um, you want to, say, to explain that? Well, just yeah, just sort of out thinking them and the situation, well, and, no, and a little example, bit of faking, the, um, faking, faking, uh, faking a uh, stroke. stroke in the, in the, uh, immigration. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that, buy, that, that was necessary. Yeah, to no. buy time. So here's what happened. <laughs> they didn't even tell us, okay, when or what until the fourth day. They took us out of jail. Um, God, how fucking jail. Anyway, took us out of jail. And, and that's to, when they finally told us that we were being and right, we went been to the immigration office and they said, you're now being shipped back to America. Yeah. And I go, what the fuck? I had my two lawyers there. They would not let me see them until that moment. Now, now that we're with officialdom, they have to let me see my lawyers. Yes. So I'm in the head of immigration and with my two lawyers and they go, well, you have to go back to America. Mr. Frank. And I go, but I came from Cuba. You cannot legally send me back. He said, well, it's very, very, very complicated in Spanish. It's muy, muy complicado, señor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's necesario. <laughs> I go, no, it's not. But anyway, so they were about to ship us off. Yeah. So I leaned over, whispered to my lawyers there, and I says, listen, I want you to leave immediately. I want you to file with the courts uh, a brief uh, demanding that I have my say in court before they do anything to me. Uh, because I knew the court would have to accept it. Why, fuck up? We were in the top of the news yeah. all over the world. John they, well, they put us there because they were, you know, they were kind of preempting the situation. They were, by yeah, they did everything, everything illegally. This yeah. is just a ruse to, uh, for America to grab us, right? So, um, and so in any case, I said, file the brief. Uh, and they said, well, that's going to take two hours. I go, two hours. Okay, I'll give you two hours. <laughs> Even though they were immediately going to ship us off. Um, so one last thing that we were doing is I had $83,000 in cash on me when I was arrested. I demanded a receipt. They were giving it back to us before we left. So we were in a room counting the cash. So I'd gone into Janice and said, I got this. Whatever happens. Don't worry. Don't yeah, worry. Don't worry. So I went in there while they were counting the money. I fell on my face in convulsions. Yeah. Right. Yes. And um, okay, but wait, so it's it's so funny because he can't could not see this part. So every like literally everybody that worked in the immigration office were looking at him like this is bullshit. Just yeah, give, I know they were all give it a second, he'll get up in a minute. This is fucking, you know, because everyone knew about him faking the heart attack in yeah, Belize. Yeah, the heart so. attack in Belize eight years ago yeah. to get out of the same situation. I needed time for my lawyers to file a brief. All right, so um, and it worked in Belize. Yeah, in it was Guatemala, so I'm sorry, funny. I was in Guatemala. Yeah, I was in oh, yeah, prison Guatemala. in Guatemala. Sorry, right? So um, <laughs> they were about to ship me back to Belize, right? Yeah. Where I would have been instantly executed. So it was important. Yeah, it was important. Now it too. Was funny, in any yeah. case, <laughs> they, it's well known that I did shit like this. Um, well, anyway, so I, and I was. Uh, it was so funny because they were like dragging their ass to get a doctor. Look, do we got a doctor in here? Like, get this man a doctor because he's whatever's going yeah. on. Here. However, <laughs> I played it to the hill. Yes, he did. When I <laughs> finally came to and opened my eyes, I looked around and I didn't recognize anybody. I didn't recognize my wife. Mm -hmm. I didn't recognize uh, my staff. I didn't even recognize the head of immigration whose office I was just sitting in. And when they are, people approach me, I'm on the floor on my butt, and I'm scooting back against the wall, going, "Stay away! Stay away! Stay away! Help! Help!" Who are, so, so now, Who are you, people? Who are you, people? They can't possibly, in that situation, <laughs> put me on a goddamn airplane, can they? <laughs> so they took me to a hospital. No, they took Janice to the airplane. Yeah, they took me to the airplane. They're, you're going anyway, bitch. Yeah, that they... is what they, that is their attitude. Yes, um, it was. However, I knew one thing. I had played it well enough yes. to fool the one doctor that was there. Now, he was looking at me so goddamn skepti skeptically. <laughs> and and yet, after a while, he nods and he says, get an ambulance. Okay. <laughs> so now I've won. Yeah. I know. I played it so well that I, I might just die at any moment from a, a uh, burst blood vessel in my brain. And what's that going to look like internationally? Uh, John McAfee dies mysteriously in custody. 
his wife, who is his nurse, says, ship off on the plane. No, come on, that doesn't look good. So they grab Janice yeah, they just as back. they're about to put her mm -hmm. on the plane, took Ooh. her to the hospital where I was. Now, yeah. at the hospital, I had to fool the goddamn doctors in the hospital. That's much easier, right? I mean, they got fucking procedures in hospitals. Once they check your ass in, they got to do a bunch of procedures. <laughs> I mean, doesn't matter what the doctors think, right? Yeah. All right, do an MRI, do, you know, do all of this shit. And by the time that shit was over and the doctor came and says, I can't find anything wrong with you. The lawyers came in <laughs> waving a piece of paper. <laughs> yes, <laughs> victory. So oh, then yes. <laughs> it wasn't five minutes before the head of immigration comes back and says, Mr. McAfee, you, well, you said you wanted to go to England. We're sending you to yeah. England. Uh, you know why? Because had it gone to court, I mean, we had videos of them refusing to let me talk to customs and then charging me with failure to declare our weapons mm -hmm. to customs, all right? So now, that would have unraveled everything. So in any case, we ended up in England. In England, we went underground. We have no phones. We're talking on a very uh, insecure line here. I don't give a shit. Everything, everything on the internet is insecure. The one thing that I do have secured is my location. And I, the best hacker in the fucking world, cannot find me on the internet. Right? You're so, goddamn right. <laughs> so now, um, well, for the first four months we were here, we we only communicated from a Faraday cage. Yeah. All right. Um, and we had a special room that no signals could enter or leave. End of story. Everything was hard a hard line from our Faraday cage mm -hmm. to another country. Now, this is not something that you can. You can't download Nord on um, Google, for example, <laughs> and pay $79 a year and get the same sort of security. Yeah. And we have signal jammers. We, I mean, trust me, you can't find me. And that's all I care about. Well, you can't trust anything. eavesdropping because people are eavesdropping on everybody. Yeah. You yeah. have a smartphone, you got no privacy. That's what I'm saying. You're carrying, anyway, you're carrying the I'm device sorry. around that's scanning, yes. scanning everything around you, listening to everybody, monitoring your in and out. Yeah. And going and yeah. out, and then you have, you know, apps like TikTok that are yeah. just yeah. funnels See, for the Chinese the government. Thing. If you cannot locate me, you cannot stop me from communicating. If they somehow manage to uh, infiltrate Zoom and say, Mac, if he's not allowed, I'll move to Skype. I mean, there are hundreds. Of, <laughs> there's no way to stop me from talking now. That's true. As long as we're never found. You had your little lab where you were making experimental things down there, and it's like, what, what are those? What are those drugs like? <laughs> well, actually, believe it or not, they were all antibiotics. I swear yeah. to God. Listen, nobody in their right mind goes to Central America and manufactures drugs in the heart of the Sinaloa cartel that controls all the drug trade. Imagine it. I mean, the first person that even heard of it go, they would go to the local Sinaloa boss and go, oh, Effie, uh, El Gringo, uh, El Asi Drogas. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but wait, my life expectancy would be measured in minutes, and its end would be horrific. So no, no one's stupid enough to do that. However, they don't give a shit if you do antibiotics, which is what I was doing. And I had some massive things based on a new science called quorum sensing. And that's the, that's the science of, it, it, up until 10 years ago, people did not know the bacteria communicated with each other. They thought there was a stupid little, no, oh, fuck no, they communicate. Uh, and they communicate through a thing called quorum sensing. Uh, different bacteria e emit different um, chemical signals. Um, and for example, if you get staph infection on your skin, listen, this is going to take forever to talk about that. Fuck no, that. No, no, but it's and interesting, about, though. Yeah, but honey, it's going to take okay, 15 well, minutes to explain. All right, all right. I, you know, this Give is not this is not this is not a type of drug which anybody's really interested in, especially since they destroyed my lab and all my samples and my research. Mm -hmm. So fuck that. Anyway, <laughs> here we are. So what was it that got you first involved into the whole cryptocurrency thing? What was it that like brought it across your whole I board? Had, anyway, I've, I've, I've had literally thousands of people who've worked for me over the years, like McAfee. There was five thousand people when I left. Uh, 
the cream of the cream of the crop I was kept in touch with. And one was a guy named Jim Zaromsky, who's worked for me five times in five different country companies, um, starting at McAfee. Um, and he came down to Belize when I was down there uh, specifically to force me to read the Bitcoin white paper, which I did. Uh, and I instantly saw the promise, not of Bitcoin, but of blockchain technologies and how it because bitcoins is as crude as you can fucking get it's got no privacy you can't put smart contracts on it's got no distributed applications it's slow no uh it's going to go away however the door that it opened has spawned an entire new uh field of technology uh blockchain based applications and for example they're putting uh, unstoppable domains on the blockchain now. I don't know if you've heard of that. So if you're worried about the government taking their domain away from you, put one on the fucking blockchain. Just, then unless you're tortured and forced to give up your seed keys, no one can ever take it away from you. <laughs> yeah. Now, to me, that is human progress. It gives people more control over their lives rather than government controlling everything. And the government does control everything, whether you like it or not, or whether you believe it or not. And if you think you're free uh, in America without having financial freedom, and as long as you uh, have to use the U.S. dollars, you have no financial freedom. You don't own those fucking dollars, you understand? And they're owned by the Fed. Um, so, and the Fed can do what it just did. We're going to add two trillion dollars to it, which is going to make your dollar worth half as much as it does, right? So you have no control. But yes, so the blockchain gives people the opportunity to free themselves from government control, from regulations, uh, from corrupt officials, and with privacy coins like Monero and, and the Ghost Coin, which I am releasing in June. We just put out our first uh, notice on it. Um, and, um, uh, you know, the, the website, our white paper is coming out 15th of May. Uh, it's a, it's a new blockchain. It's a privacy, serious privacy. And it's, uh, uh, instead of a proof of work, it's proof of stake. Why did I choose proof of stake? Good God, proof of work is using up more electricity than the entire country of Denmark. Please yeah. God, people, it, it, it is not sustainable. You know, this That's and right. with a tiny fraction of people um that are now using crypto if we want full adoption we'll be using more electricity than america and russia combined it just can't work <laughs> right get, get used to that idea i mean it's so, just it's just like right now you have this whole <clears throat> issue with these stimulus checks that could have been paid like that you know via the block listen you, they're, they're, you're not going to get those stimulus checks except a very small fraction of the people it was promised to Oh, we're I mean, not, already, we're not uh, you know, already, um, you know, if you uh, if you don't have direct deposit, well, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, five you months wait for a few months, yeah. right? Five yeah. months to get a check. Well, in five months, the dollar is going to be worth three cents. <laughs> so, right. no, seriously, what we've done with coronavirus is destroy the world economy. And people go, oh, coronavirus has cost 17 million jobs in America. No. Did the coronavirus fire those people? No our stupid reaction to it mm -hmm. lost those jobs I mean, if we just call a spade a spade the world would be a better place well yeah i mean i would say with this whole thing that's going on it's definitely and all the things that have happened leading up to this it's definitely suspicious you know there's yeah, a lot is. going on it behind is. the scenes oh, i'm sorry, baby. sorry it's okay. hang on i've lost my ear is this it no. <laughs> <laughs> I hate these fucking things. However, I hate the headphones even worse. And just because of, okay, I, I can't have a speaker because my microphone is just like yours, a very expensive motherfucker and will pick up a pin drop in the corner. So um, in any case, uh, back to where it was. <laughs> oh, here's the issue. Uh, we have time for one more question. My apologies. No, you're fine. Uh, however, you're fine. You guys, you guys seem to be uh, halfway decent folks, so uh, put Thank them you. on the list. Uh, if you ever want to uh, talk to me again, just contact Janice. Right? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. We'd definitely Thank love you. to follow so up. One more, one more question, guys, if you have a question. Well, I mean, I guess shift. just 
uh, okay, there's one serious question and then one real quick question we got to ask you because we ask everybody. But let's say, what do you think is going on right now with this coronavirus? What's the agenda? You know, there's definitely I have no more. Clue. Listen, everything that I might say about it is pure speculation. I do know this, it's not real. I mean, the virus is real, of course, and it has killed 100,000 people. <laughs> but do you know what that means? 100,000 people, the world population is two people per 100,000 people in the population. And we shut the world down for that? See, the, the, the mainstream, okay, I do know this much. If there's a beneficiary, it's the mainstream media. Why? Right. Yeah, we are all locked in our homes watching because what's the value of, of a station or a show? The number of eyeballs times the time that people spend watching it. Well, the time we spend watching it has tripled. Why? Normally, eight hours a day, well, more than that, because we get up in the morning and uh, have to brush our teeth, eat, commute to work, come home. We're not watching TV, are we? Um, and uh, weekends, shit, we're off doing things, you know, fucking our girlfriends or uh, going partying or something. But no, we're home now, so we're watching the fucking TV. So right. they're the beneficiary. Bill Gates is the beneficiary. Were they involved in this? Well, the media certainly. Why? They sensationalized it. Here's all medical professionals will tell you the same thing. The mortality rate of infectious diseases is always measured in deaths per 100,000 population, right? That way you can get a scale. Okay, so uh, the flu, for example, kills uh, 12 people per 100,000 populations every year. The coronavirus has only killed two, and we wouldn't even think about doing anything for the flu, like locking down the world for what, 12 people per 100,000? No. So that's why it's for 100,000. But instead, the news goes, oh my God, 50,000 people have died, or 7,000 died in New York. Why don't you run the numbers, people? <laughs> Population is 20 million fucking people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah. Why don't we do what everybody else does? Instead of going, oh my God, 1,000 people died, you might go, well, you know, uh, the rate of death of this thing is really insignificant at two people per 100,000 worldwide. That's the truth of it, people. That's what I know. Why this has occurred? Fuck me. It's all speculation. <laughs> You're damn right. Right? And what's your other question? Okay, so uh, the question we ask everybody, what do you think about Bigfoot? Bigfoot real, both of you, we want to know. With all your journeys, have you seen Bigfoot? Have you What's come across right? Bigfoot? Yes, have you seen Bigfoot in Colorado? Well, here's the thing <laughs> about Bigfoot. I, I think, number one, that species is antisocial. Um, they are um, refusing uh, to accept the modernization of the world. You know, I think they have some religion which uh, keeps them in the caves. Um, and they refuse to accept automobiles and electricity and all of this shit. So I say, fuck them. I mean, that's it. Fuck them. <laughs> fuck Bigfoot. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Cool. Great response. All right. All right. Well, thanks. <laughs> Great answer. Best answer so far. But uh, <laughs> thanks for taking the time and joining us. And if you and, want, if you ever want to do this again, I mean, not tomorrow, but you know, oh, it'll be a while. In a few weeks, in a few weeks, uh, yeah. contact Janice. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so we're about a month behind in scheduling. So if you want to get on, um, That's right. you can't get on before a month because we're full. Up. That's but, fine. Yeah, do you guys do? We do this with maybe one out of twenty-five oh. podcasts. Oh, awesome. just because I've, 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 I had fun talking to you. Cool. And mostly I don't, so. Sweet. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> Bravo. We did okay. good. We did good. All right. I got to yes, leave. I got to leave, guys. Talk All right. to you All right. Yep. Peace out. All right. Thank Bye, you. Janice. Bye, Janice. Bye-bye. That's so cool.